Hello, please. Before we go into this video, I want to make a plea. If you if you are a football agent or you know uh, an agent, an agent who is sincere and uh, faithful, who is willing to galvanize young talents who don't have connection, but they are really, really, truly good. Um, please contact me. Um, there are these boys that. I wish I can help, but I don't have contact on how to, you know, get them linked up to someone that will help their destiny. Please, if you are here, I promise you, you won't regret coming in contact with, with those children. Uh, please do help. Do contact me um, through the phone number that is displayed um, in the video. Thank you. God bless you. Welcome to End Time Truth Television. I said, do you know I ordained you? He said, somebody ordained you too. I now said to them, I said, no problem. We will gather back here seven days time. And between now and that seven days, one of us will not be alive. So I said that and I walked away. He was going to Abuja, had an accident. He was the only one that died in the whole vehicle. All right, brethren, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome. Um, this video you are about to watch is, um, I will leave you to analyze this now. I'm not going to say much in the video and um, I just wanted to tell us in the comment section what it is that you think and when you have finished watching the video. If you would want to understand it better, follow him sequently, you know, in sequence as, um, I mean, sequently as he progresses till he gets to the point where he killed the man. Oh, I will talk about this killing at the end, but I'm not going to say anything against or for this video. God bless you. See you at the end of this time stay tuned all right like i you are welcome to the end time truth television the channel for the lovers of truth for the truth of the end time so if you are a lover of truth give us a subscription and god bless you Shalom. one of the things that we need revival from is the spirit of jealousy envy this is one of the biggest issues in the body of Christ today. Among the church, jealousy. Jealousy is not a, jealousy is not a decision, it's a spirit. It's not just a man who makes up his mind to say, I'm envious. No, something enters him. Numbers 5.14 tells us, when the spirit of jealousy, talking about the man and his wife, the Bible says in, in, in the book of Proverbs 6 verse 34, it said, jealousy is the rage of a man. And in Psalms of Solomon 8 verse 6, he said, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. A jealous man can kill. Any man who has conquered jealousy has conquered the flesh. And these guys were envious of Moses. Forgetting this was the man. One of the things that make people envious is when they forget their roots. Pride sets in a man's heart when he forgets his roots. They forgot where they were coming from. They forgot that this was the man. Why? Because Moses, you know, they were not envious of Moses. Listen, what, what, what Moses has had access to, they had access to. There was no need to be envious of a man who called you to say be a partaker. You see, in this business of jealousy, listen, wait, 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 stop laughing. In this business of jealousy, why, how come people don't have targets and they don't aim high? You are jealous of the man who has a bungalow. In this business of jealousy, are there no dreams? Are there no goals? You should, if you want to be envious, look at the richest man in the world. Envy him. If you want to be envious, look at the most wealthy man in Africa. Envy him. Why envy your neighbor who just bought a bike? In this business of jealousy, are there no goals? Are there no targets? Are there no aspirations? Are there no aspirations? Are there no goals? Are there no heights? Somebody dressed well. You are jealous of that one. Why are you envious of what you can afford? Why are you envious of what if you work hard you can get? Why not you in this your business of jealousy? This company, this organization called Jealousy. The, I'm talking to the workers and I know I believe they are not in this church. The workers are not here. There should be heights and goals. They were envious of why because Moses was prophesying. They were prophesying. Charisma is not anointed. That you are charismatic doesn't mean you are anointed. That you are superstitious doesn't make you a prophet. Doesn't make you an evangelist. That you are a parrot doesn't make you a preacher. You know there are people who have superstition and they call it evangelist. Every light-skinned woman has marine spirit. I grew up with that mentality. Once a lady is light-skinned, they say has marine spirit. 
Why? How many of you know you're in that generation? I was in the revival service and a young man was ministering and was picking out all the light skinned ladies. So I turned to somebody. I said, Why is it everybody brought out? They're all light skinned. His mind, his mind has been wired negatively. Superstition, that's superstition, that's not prophetic. That you are superstitious doesn't make you a prophet. Moses looked at them. They challenged him before the camp. Ah. Moses looked at them and he went back to the God who called him. In the time where you are confronted for doing the right thing, in the time where you are confronted, jealousy can make people think backwards. Jealousy and pride make people forget privilege. I remember some time ago, a pastor, I've told you the story, he went somewhere in Benin City and spoke to certain people in leadership there about me. And they told me what he said, and I said to them, he didn't say it. They said he said so. I said he cannot say it. He's my son. I ordained him. He cannot say it. They say he said so. I say he cannot say so. They said he said so. I said, okay, I'm coming to Benin. I want him to stand. You stand. Let him repeat it. And they told him, and he came there. I repeated it in front of me. I said, me. He said, yes, sir. I said, when did this happen? He said, it happened. I said, me. He said, yes, sir. I said, you are lying and you are confident like this. He said, it's not a lie. You did it. It happened. I said, do you know I'm a man of God? He said, me too. I'm a man of God. No, don't shout. Of course. Of course he was a man of God. I said, do you know I ordained you? He said, somebody ordained you too. I now said to them, I said, no problem. We will gather back here seven days time. And between now and that seven days, one of us will not be alive. So I said that and I walked away. He was going to Abuja, had an accident. He was the only one that died in the whole vehicle. Am I happy he died? No! But there are certain things you don't temper. There are certain laws you don't temper. You don't fight the man who poured oil on your head. Under no circumstance, you don't fight him. If you lie, go to 20 people to put fresh oil to dilute the previous oil that was poured. It's a spiritual <laughs> spirit. This is ministry, not industry. It's ministry, not politics. If anyone who poured oil on your head becomes a dictator and antagonistic to your life, you walk away quietly and focus on your life to become attacking. Gehazi was close for Gehazi to lie to Elisha. A man who knew how sharp his prophetic man to was. He lied to his face. It's because Gehazi was focusing on the physical aspects and familiarity of Elisha. He saw him wake up. He saw him eat. He saw him... No matter how close you are to the anointing, it can still hurt you. No matter how close you are to the anointed, it can hurt you. All right, like I said uh, in the beginning that I wasn't going to say much, I will leave you to analyze this. Now, the question would be, is this kind of a thing possible? Even in the New Testament generation that we are in, I want to tell you, yes, it is possible. Is it biblical? Yes, it is biblical. Now, is it necessary that we do it? Not so necessary. Do I believe in eye for an eye, you know, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, um, you know, teeth for tats? No, I don't. Do I believe in, you know, fire for fire? I don't. But will I put my head down because I don't believe in back to sender? And then someone that, you know, I know, he has shown me, he has been walking up and down, trying to use witchcraft to kill me. Should I just fold my hands and I, I say, God, let, I, let, I know, let this person kill me. No, I don't believe in that. Now, see, please watch, follow me carefully so that you don't misquote me. A lot of you are so good in that. I brought a video yesterday where I was neither for an NHS camp nor against an NHS camp. And somebody said, oh, my brother that I know from this, this is so and so place, you are, you, 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 you should be careful of, of, of what you are getting into because you are giving the enemies a, a chance to speak against the church. Can you just imagine people with their depravity? In the same video, somebody was say, attacking me that I was speaking for an angel and another person came. So it is, it is what it is. So listen to me carefully because sometimes I don't know, you know, how people listen and what interpretation they get. I have always said here that irrespective of who your father is or who your pastor is, your pastor may not be anointed. Your pastor may not have the kind of killing anointing that Suleiman has, all right? But the Bible says that curse, curseless shall not come. It means that if I have not done anything that should warrant me to be cursed, even if the person goes to the moon and deploy the sun, 
and the stars to rise against me, it shall not work. But listen, if I cross my boundary and probably I allege that somebody stole, whereas the person has not, and the person calls me and said, please, brother, you said this, but you know it's not true. And because I don't want to retract what I said before I said, my friend, you're a thief. Now, if that person goes ahead to cry unto God against me, the judgment of God will come. It might be instant. It might be later. We must be very, very careful as not to become victims of our own foolishness, our own wickedness. Because the Bible says that the wickedness of the wicked shall slay the wicked. All right. Now, even in first, uh, in Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse six, the Bible says that it is a fair decision, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with distress and affliction those who distress and afflict you. You read it in King James Version, it says, See, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So for you to be clean and clear from this kind of incidents, you must never intentionally hurt anyone. Now, um, Suleiman has a way of telling stories. So, and most of his stories cannot be verified. And by this, I'm not saying that it is a lie. But was it necessary for him to invoke death? The point maybe the person lied against him and you know the stories of our brother Suleiman is always bothering on his personality those who have tarnished his image those who have tarnished his image those who have tarnished his image and sometimes it's like something that is built in order to use it and cleanse his image so people would understand that every story that had been told about him had been all lies and lies and lies and lies and my question is always this how is it possible that he's the only one that people are rising against? I know somebody can rise against me and tell a lie. Of course, I have had that experience many several years ago that persons went to, you know, the, the, in my boss and told him terrible lies about me because I gave my life to Christ. All right. So it happens. And even in, in, in recent time, persons have gone into offices in order to use my name to, to you know, to, to, to curry favor and tell things that look like truth but are not completely the, the truth. So it happens. And you may have experienced it even in your place of work. It happens. But then if it is consistent with you, only you, everybody, only you, only you, everybody, only is either the kingdom of hell has an agenda against you or that there's something wrong with you as a person. All right. So this is his story. Now, having established this and I, I, I saw somebody from where I got this uh, video, that person was trying to use Apostle Peter's um, experience with Sapphira and Ananias to explain this. And somehow people said it was Peter that killed Ananias. Peter did not kill Ananias. We can say maybe he did in the case of Sapphira, but he did not. All right. And technically, also, Suleiman did not kill this person, if indeed this happened. In the case of, uh, of Ananias and Sapphira, Peter was just talking. Peter never said anything. And maybe God wanted to stamp something in the church because the carelessness that was in the old assembly was not supposed to be brought into the new order. And so God set an example that the Bible said fear came upon all the people around who heard the story that time. Peter had no power to kill, but he had authority that was given to him. So when now it was, it pleased God to use Ananias to set an example. And Sapphira, his wife, came and continued in the same line. Peter said, well, the same fate that befell your husband is about to happen to you because you have agreed. Satan has filled your heart to lie against the Holy Ghost. Peter didn't, say, didn't even say the lie that, you know, to him, but lied to the Holy Ghost and lied against the Holy Ghost. Now, so the point here is that um, we may say this is witchcraft. Anyhow you look at it, we may say it is witchcraft. But all I'm saying here is that you be careful. Don't fall into the hands of some persons that even if they don't have God, they have diabolic means that they can use and pursue an agenda and get you. If your hands are clean, God will defend you. Don't frame anybody up. Whether you think the person knows, uh, has anybody that will defend them or not. My point in this video is that we must not be careless and think that no, nothing happens. We are in the new dispensation. Then I am questioning the, the necessity of invoking death in a simple, but, but detrimental anyway, detrimental to his, to his identity and personality, whatever that was said would be detrimental. But was it right for him to have invoked death? Peter did not invoke death in the first place. He didn't invoke death in the first place. He was, he was uh, talking about Moses 
and the, the camp of Zethan, Korah, and Abiram. And we know that it was the same Moses that God said, give way, let me destroy these people. And I will raise through you a nation, a mighty nation. And Moses said, no, God, you cannot do this. Moses prayed unto you. God got persuaded. Moses even began to make excuses for the people and was started telling you know, God what he said about himself, that he would show mercy to whom he would. And when he invoked mercy, God had mercy. Now, we know that there are some persons today, if they had that kind of opportunity with God, and God will tell them, clear way, let me kill all the people that have been talking against you. They will say, ah, with all pleasure, at least I will have rest. I will have rest. So God, go ahead and kill, kill them. But thank God that that will not happen. And even if it happens, God will not kill the righteous just because your pastor feel that we should not speak about. Just because your pastor feels we shouldn't uh, correct some of the things that are not right that is happening today. Now, uh, like I said, I'm not going to say much on it. Let us know what you think about it. I've said nothing. I'm in neither here nor there, according to you. But all I said is that I don't know if Moses would have accepted to kill this man. I don't know if Moses would have accepted to kill this man. The, the extent that the camp of death and Quran and Abiram went was to divide and polarize the camp of Israel. They wanted to hinder the, the, you know, the work of God. And this, again, brings us to the point that God can kill. God still kills. For those of you who would also say that God does not kill, and if ever this thing happened, somebody may say it was witchcraft that Suleiman used. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But what Moses said, if the Lord will make a new thing in the heaven, you know, on earth, and open the ground, and this the ground swallowed these people alive, and God did it, it wasn't Moses that did it, but God hearkened to his voice, and it happened. So I do not know whether after Suleiman, you know, uttered his words, he went into fasting and praying that killed the young man in a motor accident, even though he said he was not happy about it. But if he was not happy about it, if he wouldn't be happy about it, why was he making that kind of declaration? At least he could have used something else that probably would be remedied when it happened to prove to people that, yeah, this man lied. That is one. Secondly, sometimes these stories sound intimidating so that if someone like me hears him talk or do something i probably shouldn't talk about him because he can he can command death to come but hey i shall not die but live to declare the good works of god nobody can kill me because i'm not lying against anybody just looking at what they are doing what they are displaying that against the scriptures and we are talking about it so that those who don't know the scriptures would understand that this is not the ways of god so for me I think he went to the extreme. For me, even if you were the one that anointed him, you don't have to kill him. Gehazi was not killed by Elisha. Probably if Gehazi had returned and asked for mercy, maybe Elisha would have had mercy on him, right? So uh, there are so many other places where incidents like this happened in the Bible, but we are not commanded to do everything. Some of the stories were there are there for us to learn from it. Now, giving the young man no opportunity at least to repent and come back and say sorry for me was the extreme so do i think it he was right no i don't think he was right that's my opinion don't insult me because of my opinion if you wish to insult me go ahead and insult me put down your own in the comment section i'll be seeing you in the next video till then from me to you shalom